hi guys welcome back to another youtube video it's your favorite science teacher disha today we'll be working the cape environmental science unit 1 2003 past paper but before we get into it you already know the cliche drill like share and subscribe stay tuned get ready to rumble so number one says study the diagram in figure one carefully and answer the questions that follow so let's carefully observe figure one by the way what is figure one carbon cycle right and a says we should identify the process b and C as shown in the diagram. So let's identify B. So B is right here. And let's identify C, C is right here. So what are you noticing at B? Arrow is pointing down. So it's going into these trees here, right? So we could say that this process here, B, is photosynthesis, right? Recall. Photosynthesis is carbon dioxide plus water, which gives you glucose and oxygen, right? Let's jump right over to C. What are you noticing here? The arrows are pointing upwards, right? Going, so it's releasing carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. So we're seeing arrows going from this animal here that looks like a cow, and then this human here, and also from the tree. So we can conclude that the process C is respiration. And then part B says, describe each of the processes identified in A above. So we're gonna be describing photosynthesis and respiration. So we could say that in photosynthesis, the chloroplast of green plants capture light energy to synthesize glucose from carbon dioxide and water. And then on the contrast, for respiration, the mitochondrion of cells in organisms create energy by combining oxygen and glucose, resulting in the release of carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Part C says we should explain how each of the processes identified in A above affects the amount of carbon in the atmosphere, two marks. So simple statements, right? So you identify how photosynthesis and how respiration affects the amount of carbon in the atmosphere. So to do this, I've written the equations for you. So what do you notice about these two? Hmm? So one is making carbon dioxide or releasing carbon dioxide, right? And then the other, which is photosynthesis, is pulling or taking carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to generate another organic compound, right? So we could say that photosynthesis pull carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, right? And then for respiration, we could say it's a reciprocal process, right? It releases back carbon into the atmosphere, continuing the cycle. All right, let's jump over to figure two. So figure two is an incorrect representation of the biological organization in the environment. Part A says define any two terms in figure two above. So you have ecosystems, species, communities, biosphere, and you should just define any two. I'm going to define all of them for you. So a species is defined as a group of individuals that can interbreed. The ecosystem is a system consisting of the biotic, which you know are the living, the abiotic, the non-living components, 
that function together as a unit. The community is a group or association of two or more species occupying the same geographical area at the same time. And the biosphere would therefore be all the ecosystem on the earth where life exists. Now, part B says you should redraw figure two to show the correct biological organization in the environment. Now, I hope you are listening to my definitions because this is gonna help you. If I said that a community was a group or association of four more species, then right about there, you should be knowing that community comes before species, right? So you could put species at the far end followed by community. And if the biosphere is the collection of all the ecosystem, then you know that ecosystem is gonna come before biosphere. So the trajectory there is species going to communities, going to ecosystem, going to biosphere. Part C says distinguish between a niche and a habitat. Hmm? Simply put it, a habitat is the place where an organism lives, while the niche is that organism's role within the environment. And to distinguish between the two, you could also put examples there. So we could say that an example of an habitat is a tree that houses birds, insects, arthropods, and so on. And an example of a niche could be a lion who is a predator, that's its role, who hunts or prey on other animals. Moving on to number three. Some organisms effectively catch their prey because their bodies are the same color as the vegetation in which they hide. How does the mechanism of evolution account for this adaptation? Hmm. What is this question saying to you? So we could say these organisms are displaying camouflage, right? And with camouflage, these predators effectively hid behind vegetation, which prevented detection and recognition. Now, because of this success, it improved their genetic fitness, right? So over time, this adaptation became a part of their genetics and the environment selected for them, leading to the evolution of this trait. trait. And we can conclude that this process that drives the mechanism is natural selection. Number four, distinguish between a food chain and a food web. Now a food chain shows one linear path of energy flow through an ecosystem, while a food web is a collection of food chains, right? In this collection of food chain, you have organism being placed into different trophic levels. And the trophic levels include the different categories of organisms like the producers, the consumers. Now part B says, explain why most food webs do not have more than three or four levels. Answer this question effectively. You have to revisit the 10% rule of ecological pyramids, right? And according to the 10% rule, only about 10% of energy at one level is available to the next level. You might be saying, what is happening to the other 90%? Well, the other 90% of energy is used for metabolic processes or giving off as heat, right? And this loss of energy explain why there are really more than four or three trophic levels in a food web. Moving on to number five, figure three represents a population diagram showing the number of people on the horizontal axis in various age range on the vertical axis. The first part of the question says, with reference to figure three, answer the following questions. Identify the type of population diagram shown. 
So this is called an age to sex or age to gender population diagram. And part B is, is the information representative of a developed or a developed country. This is a developing country diagram. And how do you expect the population of the country represented to grow in the future? Well, to understand this question, you have to look at the trajectory of the diagram. What's happening? At what age is the bulk of the population? And at what age is the least of the population? So what is a broad base telling you? It could indicate high fertility rates in young people. Number six, define the following terms. Total fertility rate. Well, the total fertility rate in a specific year is defined as the total number of children that would be born to each woman if she were to live to the end of her childbearing years and give birth to children in alignment with the prevailing age specific fertility rates. Secondly, this one should be an easy one for you guys. Infant mortality rate. The infant mortality rate is the number of deaths per 1,000 live births of children under one year of age. And thirdly, replacement level fertility. Replacement level fertility is the level of fertility at which a population exactly replaces itself from one generation to the next. Table one provides demographic data for Barbados and St. Kitts and Nevis. So let us carefully look at table one with the countries and their respective infant mortality rate. First thing you should do if you're in the exam and you're seeing a table like this is take a minute to observe the trend in the table here. So based on the data provided in table one, which country will have a faster growing population? Definitely Barbados. And they say, explain why? Well, look at the infant mortality rate. More babies are dying in St. Kitts and Nevis than Barbados, right? Barbados has a lower infant mortality rate. That means more babies are surviving, which can replenish the population. So Barbados population would increase over time than St. Kitts 